So you prove, you show the packaging, you show the product, you say, here's my brand, here's my brand name. Uh, I want this, I want to be able to sell my items on Amazon. Without brand registry, it's still allowed. It's called brand approval, but they want proof. They want to see your product. They want to see the product with your name and logo on it. Um, so Celestial Sense here is a brand that she's created, has a logo, everything. And it has to be your logo, your packaging. They want it to be professional quality. So this, you don't can't buy a stamp for $10 at Staples or even at Imprint or whatever and stamp your name on it. They want permanently affixed professional looking packaging to make sure you actually have a brand. So your brand could be XYZ Imports. It could be, um, you know, Kristen's Favorite Things LLC. It doesn't matter the name of the brand. Number one, as long as it's not trademarked by somebody else um, is, is a key. So you don't have to have the registry first. You need brand approval first. Well, then what else? What are the other steps? What are the other steps? I know there's lots of steps. You have to have a brand to get brand approval. Now you're saying I'm only doing wholesale bundles. I don't want to create a brand. I'm not a private label company. Guess what? You kind of are. If you're creating wholesale bundles, you're creating a wholesale bundle brand, AKA Kristen's favorite things is my bundle brand, right? So Kristen's favorite things as my bundle brand, I'm going to get brand approval with that. I'm going to have something printed or, or like, let's just call it mommy income, right? This is my mommy income brand. And I'm gonna register mommy income on Amazon as my selling brand. So what I need is to create a logo, which I have, you can see here. Um, this is my mommy income logo. And this is my poly bag that has my brand permanently affixed created on it. Now I can put my products inside of this poly bag and then get approval from Amazon to sell my brand. Now I have approval. That means I'm not registered yet, right? So I've got approval. Next step is to take that approval and create a listing with your product on Amazon. And whether you sell this item or not, whether it breaks you even, whether it's merchant fulfilled does not matter. Why you need this is because it's easier for your trademark to be approved once you have your item in use. So I have a couple of examples of this. I have three trademarks right now with the USPTO. My very first one was mommy income, of course. Um, my second trademark was one of my bundle brands and that was approved without a hiccup. It was really a strange name. There was no other, it's like an acronym. So there's no other competing marks. It doesn't cause any confusion. And we were already using the mark on some of our products that we have. So when they saw our listing that we, it was a specimen that you have to attach to your trademark application. We already had an Amazon listing. So we linked to the Amazon listing and the images and like, oh, these people are already using this brand. Much more likely to get approved if you're already using it in commerce. You're already selling products with this logo and this name on it. They it's more, it's more credibility for approving the trademark. Okay. Second trademark I filed. Same thing. I was already using it in commerce. I showed them the website. I showed them the product. They rejected it and said it was subjective. Then I show I, I, I reapplied with a new specimen and I showed them, hey, I already have $50,000 of sales of this product. Please help me protect myself against everyone. And then after selling the product for a while, I, I the second time around with my trademark, um, I kept it open. It never like closed and was like officially denied. It was like a six month waiting period. And in during that six month waiting period, I'd submitted more specimens and they saw the sales reports and they're like, okay, this person actually is selling underneath this brand. We better let them be protected. So just recently after a long, long time, November of 2020, I think. <laughs> That was a long time. Oh, uh, we finally got our, our trademark. So um, that second one was the, actually that's our third one, I guess. Um, it was approved. So um, there's sometimes there's work involved in all of that, but needless to say, don't pick stuff that's subjective. When you're picking your brand name, pick something that's weird and bizarre. Um, like, but like uh, one of the examples they use on the USPTO website is like um, the bananas tires right? Because banana tires, banana tires, what does that mean? It's so odd and weird that like they honor that as a good trademark because it's, it doesn't like if you did rubber tires, like the, that's kind of descriptive and subjective and that the descriptive words, they don't allow to trademark. So it's gotta be something unique, different, uh, recognizable that doesn't cause any sort of customer confusion. So creating your brand, 
doesn't mean you're creating a brand for life that ever, that has to go on every single unit that you ever make. You're trying to get brand registry with your brand, pick something generalized. So I sell everything 